Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to our channel about medicine, med school and being a doctor in Australia. My name is Beck and I'm a hospital doctor in Melbourne. This is another video born from the questions that you guys have been asking me. Today we're talking all about what happens after med school. I get these questions all the time in some variation. What do you have to do when you're a doctor? What is an intern, resident or registrar? How do you get into a specialty? I'm worried I'm too old. How many years does it take? And if that's you, I've got another video for you linked below to help you work through that. How many exams do you have to do? Do you always have to be studying? Do you get paid while you're still training? And people ask what specialty I'm doing. All right, let's get into the details of each segment. What do we do? How do you get into your specialty? Do we still get paid when we're still training? How long does it take? Read also, am I too old to go down this path? Do you always have to be studying? How many exams do you have to do? All right, in era one, before specialty training. Internship. Once you have finished medical school, you are a qualified medical doctor. The term internship leaves a few people confused. Your internship is your first year of working as a doctor and you do get paid quite well and very well if you're like a typical intern doing a lot of overtime. Internships are almost exclusively hospital based, but recently there's become an option to do a placement in general practice too. The difference between internship and residency in this first era is that as an intern, you'll have a provisional registration with us and as a resident you'll have a general registration. A provisional registration means that your practice is highly supervised. APRA is the body that regulates health professionals in Australia with their primary role being to protect the public. If you don't have APRA registration despite being fully qualified as a medical doctor you are not licensed to practice in Australia. To qualify to progress from your provisional registration to your general registration with APRA, you need to be deemed safe and suitable to lift this supervision and you need to do a minimal number of weeks in the rotations of emergency, surgery and medicine. They're each somewhere between 10 to 12 weeks full-time equivalent. Okay, the next stage, but still in that pre-specialty training era, is residency. So you've passed your internship, you've gotten your general registration with APRA. As a resident, you can apply to different hospitals to employ you in one of four different streams. There can be less streams in smaller hospitals. Hospitals. These are medical streams, surgical streams, acute care streams or general streams. In each stream you do rotations of 8 to 12 weeks in different hospital areas and as you would suspect the medical streams get predominantly medical rotations, the surgical streams get predominantly surgical and so on. Residency is the time between when you finish your internship but you're not yet pursuing your specialty training. But you can use these streams to work out what you might like to do or what you're interested in learning more about to make that decision. Now this decision about which specialty training program you pursue should not be taken lightly because it's a long path and it's a lot of work with great variation depending on which specialty you pick. Not only do you need to consider what consultant you want to be, what specialist you want to be at the end of your training, ultimately in your life, but you also need to consider the specialty training itself in your life because it can last anywhere from 5 to 10 years. Again, a vast variation between specialties. They also can cost you a lot of money. It costs $10,000 to sit some exams. That's the extreme. But it also costs you thousands of dollars each year just to be in the training program. Then you've got to buy textbooks, journal subscriptions, conferences and flights for conferences, all the time and costs associated with your research projects. We'll just move on from that. All right, registrar when you're in the specialty training program era. Specialty training programs are governed by the medical colleges in Australia. The duration and requirements of each college vary vastly between different colleges. To get onto a specialty training program, you need to have met the requirements to be accepted by that college. You need to be employed by a hospital in that registrar role. Then you need to meet the college's requirements to progress year by year in the training program. The programs are both years-based, time-based, and exam-based. The specialty training programs themselves take four to seven years, so not including this time in the pre-specialty training era. Now, I mentioned another specialty training type earlier in the overview of term. In the specialty training era, you have the accredited registrar, which is who I was just talking about, but we also had the unaccredited registrar. The difference between the two is the accredited registrar, they've been accepted in, they're ticking off the assessment and time requirements. The unaccredited registrar is not yet accepted into the college, but they're acting in a registrar role. So I popped them into this section because they look very different and act very different in the hospital from a resident or from an intern. They work just in that specialty area. So 
plastic surgery, for example. Week by week for the whole year, they're working in plastic surgery. A resident, however, is rotating through different specialties. Take a surgical resident as a close example. They might do one rotation in plastic surgery, but then their other three rotations are in, say, urology, general surgery, and ICU. So that's why I popped the unaccredited registrar in the specialty training program era, because they are working very specifically towards the goal. However, the years of work they do aren't being counted towards that time requirement from the medical college's perspective to be able to advance in their specialty training. Hospital texting me and my time off. <sighs> Now you might ask why would people ever do unaccredited terms rather than just getting into the college and doing accredited terms and that's because for particular specialties it can be really 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 competitive to get accepted into the college. Surgery and particularly plastic surgery is a great example and that's why I use the same one. There's a few others like that too. Orthopedic surgery can be very competitive and so it's a reasonably normal and expected thing if you want to get onto these training programs to spend at least a few years in this unaccredited role building your competency, building up your research portfolio, be accepted by the college into that accredited registrar role. In my role in physician training, it's a natural progression to be an accredited registrar. You get onto the accredited registrar training program straight from residency when you interview and get a job from a hospital, from the director of physicians training at that hospital saying, yes, we want to employ you to work in our hospital in our specialty training program. Finally, the last era for us to talk about is after specialty training. Once you've finished your specialty training, once your medical college qualifies you in your medical specialty, you can work as a consultant in that specialty. You can be employed by the hospital or practice as a consultant. You can be employed in private or public hospitals and in general people are employed for a number of sessions or lists and then in general do some amount of ward duty or being on call for consults. As a consultant you've worked as a doctor for at least six to eight years. This is when you can start really taking back control and reconstruct your life how you want to again based on which jobs you pick or how you negotiate those sessions and on calls with the hospital. Now like I said you get paid for all the spectrum for once you become a qualified medical doctor from internship to consultancy. The pay curve goes a little bit like this. Did that just get cut out? Now actually to get more technical the pay curve can go a little bit like this. <laughs> what I'm trying to demonstrate is your fellowship time. So in a lot of specialties after you finish your special training you will go on to do a fellowship. Now fellowship is a time where you generally dive into your specific sub tiny area of specialty that you want to grow in and bring back to your consulting practice. Often people will go overseas to do their fellowship because they want to go to the center of that subspecialty for the world. And this can be really important if you want to work in a really big metropolitan hospital to be competitive. The fellowship programs can be completely unpaid. They can be sponsored in some way or they can be paid partially or as full pay from the hospital. So that is enough for this video. Let me finish off with where I'm at in this big system for those of you who want to know. I have just finished my first year of... <laughs>